This is Alan Jackson, and this is his bourbon silver belly. Now, all the marketing materials here are very, very clear that this was distilled for Alan Jackson and not by Alan Jackson. So I have no real idea as to how much input he had on the process or if he just slapped his name on the label. So if Alan isn't making this, who is? I don't know. Turns out a press release last year claims that this bottle was made by Silver Screen Bottling Company, who's known for making celebrity endorsed whiskeys at DSP-KY-10. A little sleuth that on the internet, turns out it's Green River Distilling Company in Owensboro, Kentucky, which makes other celebrity whiskey like Terry Bradshaw's and John Wayne's bourbon. And that dash 10 on the number means it's the 10th oldest registered distillery in Kentucky. Silver Belly's named for the color of Alan Jackson's iconic cowboy hat, and it doesn't exactly have batch numbers. It's actually named after Alan Jackson's uh, chart topping number one hits. This one being chart number one, 1990, here in the real world. You may be wondering what goes into making Silver Belly here for Alan Jackson, and I am too, because as far as we could tell, there's absolutely nothing on the internet about the mash bill of this whiskey. But as we'll see in a second, it does tell us on the bottle that it was aged a minimum of two years. But with no information, we're just gonna have to let the tasting do the talking. So let's see what the bottle tells us. On the front, the original Silver Belly Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, chart number one, title, here in the real world. Distilled exclusively for Alan Jackson, 91 proof. On the back, an image defined by an iconic music career. A career composed of timeless songs about life, love, and heartache by a man of integrity with a signature look. Silver Belly, the color of his iconic cowboy hat, a premium spirit distilled exclusively for and hand-selected by Alan Jackson. Every detail of Silver Belly whiskey has been carefully crafted to create a brand worthy of celebrating a career and countless memories for all to enjoy. Alan Jackson's signature, established in 1958, produced by Silver Screen Bottling Company, Owensboro, Kentucky, DSP KY10, aged a minimum of two years in New Oak. Being two years, this is not gonna be a particularly dark whiskey. And when you don't have a great looking whiskey, you slap a big old label on the front. So you've got this huge white label with some silver and blue. Overall, not bad looking. I wouldn't just instantly thought, okay, this is Alan Jackson's whiskey without doing a little reading on it, but overall, not a bad look. Let's check out those distiller's notes. Nose, brown sugar, sweet apple, cherry, honey. Taste, sweet, smooth, and spicy. Bright fall fruits with a light, silky texture on the mid palate. Finish, soft caramelized oak tones are met with a savory wood spice on the finish. Those are a lot of tasting notes for a 91 proof whiskey, so it's got a lot to live up to. And as I said, we're about to blind this and judge it on several different criteria. But before we do that, it always helps me out if you'll hit that like button for me, maybe subscribe if you haven't done so already. Also your support in places like Patreon and here on YouTube channel memberships also help us take our content up to the next level and continue doing what we're doing. You might also consider joining the free Discord server where we're just hanging out and talking about whiskey and you get the most up-to-date information on cool things like our new barrel picks that we're working on. And as always, we got the best merch in the game. I absolutely love Owa, and this is a fantastic shirt. Like, I wear mine all the time, so much so that I've almost washed the freaking print off. Like, it takes a lot to do that to one of these shirts. It's just so soft and comfortable, man. I wear it everywhere. Links to all of that are in the description if you're interested. But that's enough talking. Let's get to drinking. Here's my blind review of Alan Jackson's Silver Belly. All right, sample number four, and I just realized I'm wearing my fishy shirt. It's got little fishies on it, but like on camera, it just looks like I'm wearing a hospital gown. I don't know who told me that on the live stream, but they're right. Damn it, I'm just wearing my hospital gown and doing bourbon reviews. That's the life. I don't even know if this is a bourbon. Like, I don't know if y'all can see that in the camera, but that is the lightest colored anything bourbon related that I've ever reviewed. They're not supposed to be anything in here that's not bourbon. I mean, it could be a rye, it could be an American, or Tennessee whiskey or something, but it's supposed to be bourbon-ish, right? No scotches, no Irish whiskeys, no Añejo or anything, and that is super freaking light. So that, that does not bode very well for it. But again, I have no idea what this is, and y'all do. Now, the first criteria is aroma slash flavor. Okay, so the nose has just a hint of rapid aging. It might not be that. I don't know how it could be super aged with as light as it is, but it smells like maybe they threw it on some staves. It's not super strong though, but overall that kind of artificial oakiness just doesn't smell wonderful to me. 
I'm not tasting a ton of rapid aging though. Not tasting a ton of aging at all. Whatever it is could have used more time in the barrel. It is easy to drink on, not a ton of proof. I think this would be worse than just an average whiskey to me. Not bad, if somebody just handed me this and that's all they had, I'd be like, okay, let's have a pour, have a good time. But I think you can just go get an average whiskey somewhere and it's gonna be a step up from this one. So we're gonna take this one down to a 45 on the flavor and uh, aroma, which is nerve wracking. This is the first one we've taken down to below average. And so I <laughs> hope it's not something really sought after. And the next criteria is complexity. And what we're looking for here is how does it evolve? And it's really just got a light sweet oakiness all the way through, right through the mid palate. There's no real complexity to it whatsoever. Again, nothing super off-putting, nothing that makes me say, oh my God, I wouldn't drink this, but nothing that'll ever make me wanna go back to the bottle either. So. I think that complexity probably holds true at right around 45 as well. And the next criteria is finish. And it's gonna be 10% of the overall Brusel score. Finish is just sugar. Like it's just sugar, slight touch of oak. I would say the finish is actually a little more pleasant than the whiskey just because most of those flavors I don't love are kind of gone. The fact that it's got a light finish might actually play in its favor here just a little bit. So I'm gonna bump it up just a hair to 48. And the next criteria is mouthfeel. How thick and viscous is this whiskey? And it is not clinging to the glass any whatsoever. Like super thin, just like drinking water for the most part. So super thin, probably a 40 on the mouthfeel. I'm hoping it's some celebrity whiskey. I have no idea what that is. I, I don't even have a guess. Overall, it's, it's a decent whiskey if it's cheap, right? If this is like a $15 bottle, it's not Evan Williams bottle in bond, but I'd be like, okay. But if this is like a 60 or $70 bottle, <sighs> Let me get the notes. Here we go. Silver Belly, <laughs> made here in the real world, 91 proof. That, that feels about right. Overall, not, not a bad whiskey, but it is a little below average. Like you could just go get a bottle of Jim Beam and it's going to be better than this, in my opinion, unless you just don't really like whiskey flavors, right? If you just want a light, subtle oakiness with a little bit of sweetness, this will do it for you. Let's kick back to future me to discuss availability and value of this guy and show where it ranks on our Brusel score. Let's talk about availability and value of this bourbon. The price of this guy is somewhere around $40 MSRP is where I've seen it for sale. And I actually had someone else grab me this bottle because I wasn't able to find one. So availability on this, although it's not super rare and you'll never come across one, it's definitely not going to be in every store everywhere. So I'm gonna put the availability at around a 50. And value on this guy, 40-ish dollars at a 91 proof celebrity backed whiskey. We'll see what the Brusel score comes out to be. This is going to be not an incredible value. So I'm gonna put the value of this bourbon at about 30. So that gives Silver Belly a Brusel score of 44.8. And that score of 44.8 makes this the worst bourbon we've reviewed so far. Now it's not a terrible product. There's nothing super off-putting about it, but this is the first one where I thought it was just below an average bottom shelf bourbon that you could pick up almost anywhere. So if you're a big fan of Alan Jackson, enjoy that. Otherwise, probably not worth picking up.